Hi, and welcome back to Clarkonomics. In this video, we're going to talk about something called compounding interest. If you have not watched the video that I made about simple interest, I would recommend stopping this and going back and watching that one, unless you already know about simple interest. So, this is a little bit of a review from that video I just referenced um, about terminology. Uh, terminology is very important when you're talking about finance. It has a language of its own, and these are some of the terms associated with lending. So, feel free to pause the video if you need to write these down. Otherwise, I'm going to move it on. So, in the previous example, uh, we talked about a loan between two guys here, Paul and John. And we're going to use that example again to demonstrate the idea of compounding interest. So, long story short, compounding interest is a pretty simple idea. You're earning interest not just on the principal, but you're actually earning interest on previously accrued interest as well. Accrued interest is interest you already owe. That's what that means. Uh, it's a little bit of a tough concept to explain just like this, so it's better to do an example. Let's take a look. So in the previous video, we said that Paul borrowed $100 from John for one year with 20% interest. And what that meant was that at the end of year one, Paul owed John $120. 100 of that money was principal, the original amount borrowed, and $20 of that was the interest, right? 20% of 100 was 20. So that's the example from the previous video. But now imagine that at the end of the year, Paul doesn't pay John any money back, and John lets the loan go on for another year, but this time with a 20% annually compounding interest rate. So let's review here. During the second year, what that means is Paul has to pay 20% interest, not just on the principal, that original $100, but he now has to pay 20% interest on the interest he already owes, which at this point is $20. That's the accrued interest was $20. So now he's paying interest on the principal and paying interest on interest. So let's see how this would look. At the end of the second year, this means that Paul is going to owe another $24 in interest to John. Because, let's take a look. He's paying 20% interest on the principal, there's the original $100, and he's paying 20% interest on the $20 in interest he already owes. 20% 20 times, 20 times 100 is uh, 20, 20% 20 times 20 is 4, and 20 plus 4 is 24. Um, also, you could just look at the total amount that Paul already owed, right, from year one, 120, and just multiply that by 20%, and that's going to give you 24 as well. So that's how much interest, additionally, Paul is going to owe in addition to the $120 he already owes. So the question now becomes, in total, what will Paul owe John at the end of the second year? Well, let's take a tally here. First thing you know, he's always going to owe, right? The first thing we have to think about, the principal thing we have to think about, is the principal. So $100 in principal. We know that Paul already owed $20 in interest that was accrued during year one. And over year two, Paul accrued another $24 that he has to pay in interest, right? So we've got the original principal. We've got $20 in interest from year one, $24 in interest in year two. And by the way, if this loan were to go on for more years, what do you think would happen to that interest number over time? It would keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But anyway, we'll get there. So at the end of the second year, right, we can add all this stuff up. Paul is going to owe John $144. That's 100 plus 20 plus 24 is 144. So that's how compounding interest works. You're not just paying interest on the principal, you're paying interest on the interest you already owe. Of course, that's just if you're the lender, right? If you're the borrower with a compounding interest loan, you're getting paid not just for the principal, but you're getting paid for the interest as well. So let's take a look at the formula. The compounding interest formula, this is a little bit of a simplified version of it um, because this is designed for ninth grade economics. If you uh, take more advanced math classes, you'll do more advanced compounding interest formulas, but we're just going to use a basic one, and I'll explain why it's basic in a little bit. So here it is. P times parentheses 1 plus R, close parentheses, to the nth power equals A. That's an exponent there, that little lowercase n. 
So in this case, P means principal, R, lowercase r, means the interest rate, N means the number of years until maturity. In other words, the term just written out in years. And A means the final amount owed you know, or earned, depending on who you are. Now here's the assumption that we're making to make this formula a little bit cleaner. We're assuming that the interest compounds annually. What that means is just one time per year. If the interest were to compound every six months or every quarter or so, that would actually complicate things a little bit. We're gonna keep it nice and clean and just say the interest compounds just once per year. So let's plug everything in with our previous example. Paul borrows $100 from John for two years with a 20% annually compounding interest rate. So we've got our principal right there. We've got our one, which is always one. We've got our interest rate, 0.2. Remember, we never write the interest rate as a percentage. We write it as a decimal. And we've got our exponent, which corresponds to the number of years in the term. So, okay, now we can just go ahead and simplify a bunch of stuff out here, right? We can do one plus 0.2 is gonna be 1.2. If we square that, because that comes next, right? We square whatever's in the parentheses here. So 1.2 squared is 1.44. It's as easy now as 100 times 1.44. And that's gonna give us $144, which is the answer that we'd gotten on the previous slide. So that's how you do this with the compounding interest formula. It's just a matter of plugging stuff in. Okay, so let's take a second now to look at the difference between simple and compounding interest. This is like a little bit of review, but a little bit of extension as well. So simple interest, again, interest is only paid slash earned on the principal itself. That's simple interest. Compounding interest is when interest is paid slash earned on the principal and accrued interest, right? That's the difference between simple and compounding interest. Here's a question to make you apply what you learned here. If you are a lender of money, which type of interest would you prefer, simple or compounding? So the answer is you would always prefer compounding interest because in the long run, or not even in the long run really, it's gonna earn you more money in interest. So if you're a lender, you'd prefer compounding interest, um, more frequently compounding, the better. And if you're a borrower, you'd prefer simple interest. All right, so a miracle of compounding. Let's take a look at how this uh, compares and let's look at it over time as well. So John Lentz Paul, $100 for two years, 20% interest rate. If this is a simple interest rate, we know again that John would earn $140, right? One plus 0.2 plus 0.2, $140. If this is compounding, John earns $144. Now that doesn't sound like a very big deal. You know, it's just a $4 difference, who cares? What's gonna be the main variable and how big this difference becomes between simple and compounding? Well, the main variable is gonna be time. So for the lender, the longer the life of the loan, the bigger the advantage of compounding becomes. So to see this in action, let's imagine that this was a loan not for two years, but for 10 years. If you want to, you can now pause the video and you can see, you can calculate out a 10 year loan, 20% a year, simple and 20% a year compounding. Again, if you're doing this in the simple one, you just do one plus 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2, you'd have 10.2s basically. Um, and if you were doing this in the compounding one, you just have 0.2 there and you would change your exponent to be 10. So feel free to pause and work that out. But I'm gonna give you the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so 20% of $100 per year for 10 years, well, okay, that's pretty easy to figure out, right? We've just got, you know, 200 bucks basically, right? Because John is earning $20 a year for 10 years. 10 times 20 is 200. 200 plus the original principal, 300 bucks. So if this was a simple interest loan, John would earn $300 after 10 years. If this was a compounding loan, can't do that one in my head, right? Then we'd have to um, put the exponent as 10 and John would earn $619 if this was a compounding loan. So what you can see here is even though the difference between these two loans is relatively small with just a two-year term, if you have a 10-year term, 
John would earn more than twice as much with a compounding loan than he would earn with a simple interest loan. So that's the miracle of compounding for you. Um, most accounts, um, bank accounts, loans, credit cards, stuff like that, that is all compounding. So it's very important to know how compounding works, which means if you're uh, the borrower of money, you wanna pay that back as fast as you possibly can. Uh, you know, that's very important. And most of us will probably be borrowers of money um, in our lifetime, so it's good to know. So thank you for watching and have a good day.